Welcome back to the channel folks and to another painting guide. You can see the pictures that's going to be scrolling past here is lots and lots of tanks. And what do lots and lots of tanks need painted? They need wheels and tracks. Lots and lots of wheels and tracks. A, a very much a chore when you're painting. So it's not something that I've covered in a great deal of detail when doing my painting guides. But I recently thought it might benefit to have a dedicated video to this subject. So what I'm going to put together here for you is a guide to how I paint my German tanks, my dark yellow German tanks. I would take slightly different approaches to other vehicles, other colours. So this is specifically for dark yellow and I'm going to take you through all the numerous stages, you know, the, all the basically how to complete this chore in a way that will give you nicely defined tracks, wheels, tyres and importantly upper and lower hull because that definition on small 1-100 scale tanks can make a really big difference and help make the tank pop and its size and dimensions really clear. I prefer to paint the track separate from the hull. It's not always possible depending on how the tank goes together, but if you can do it that way, it's very easy to reattach the tracks when they're finished and the fact that they're separate helps you avoid a lot of additional tidy up that you might need and makes the job a lot quicker and easier as you don't have to work around fenders and side skirts and such likes. Where it's more problematic to keep the tracks off such as where the side skirts and shores in such as on this Panzer 3 here you can use some kind of masking to help protect the airbrushed or painted camel that's um, very very close to all those wheels and tyres here I've used a post-it it's got very very soft tackiness on the glue so you're not going to damage the paintwork you're going to remove it easily and around fenders and such lights where it's a bit more irregular you could use a little lump of blue tack. I always start with the tracks themselves and I use an undercoat of olive drab. It's a good greeny earthy stone coloured paint that can cover just about any potential setting for the tank and it gives a good solid colour for us to then add a metallic glint to. Now I use a large brush on the larger areas and on the inside areas and around wheels I use a smaller brush and when I'm using a smaller brush I'm using one which is okay quality but it's not one of my better quality brushes because painting all those hundreds of little teeth, those little edges, sharp edges, um, is going to wear out the brush. Right throughout this process, I'm going to be careful to be as neat as possible, but I find when painting tracks, it's, it's inevitably going to be some kind of tidy up, especially on such as the rims on the metal wheels and so on. So keep it as tight as you can, but don't worry if you do get a bit of your track colour on the hull, because we're going to tidy all that up and fix it later on. So a couple of coats of olive drab later, we're ready to give it the metallic glint that the tracks are going to need. Now, I always put a metallic glint on tracks. It just helps tell the eye what it's seeing. And historically, you know, I've seen videos of tracks plowing their way through muddy fields and there's huge massive lumps of mud falling off the tracks. But you still see that metallic edge on or the cleats and, and all the, the sharp edges off the tracks. And this is where you have to be really careful or you'll make a mess. You will get some of this dry brush onto the, the wheels for instance and maybe onto like the dry sprocket or the idler but be careful because you don't want to get the, this metallic paint everywhere. I use a small brush, very small brush as it turns out. Um, it's one that's been worn right down after a great deal of use and that way I can hit the edges, work on the, like the, the inside areas, though not excessively, but the inside areas of the, the bottom of the track looking down as well as on its outside edge and then the inside areas a bit more of the upper areas of the track because you've got all those teeth and flat areas, uh, but it's more the teeth that you want to be catching. 
The dry brush is the quickest part of this whole process folks, but one that can also cause the largest amount of damage. And in that respect, it's important to immediately gloss varnish your tracks. If these uh, tracks are still part of a vehicle, I would gloss varnish the whole vehicle at this point. You know, keep that, that um, process in time with the painting of the tracks. Don't gloss varnish the hull, then paint the tracks. Wait until the tracks are done and apply a coat of gloss varnish. The reason for that is this dry brush metallic paint you've put on is very susceptible to lifting off. And if you mishandle it in any way, you can transfer that metallic paint onto another part of the miniature, especially when the miniature uh, has the tracks already attached. So now the most demanding, I would say, part of the process is carefully painting all the rubber tires on the wheels. This is the most time consuming part of painting the tracks in my opinion, because you've got to carefully work around all the outside edges of these tires, trying to preserve the, the core, and if you're looking for a really fine finish, the rim around the core, you know, which is the, the metal of the wheel. So I tend to work at one angle all the way along, and then I'll change the track, and then work at another angle all the way along, keeping my paint sufficiently thin so it's going to flow off but stay where I want it. It's not going to start uh, drifting off onto the track, the metal track, and it's going to give a nice solid coverage. We don't have to be too fussy here, folks, about um, getting an absolute perfect coverage because we're going to be going to be putting a wash over this. But if there's anything which is too thin, give it a bit of a touch up. Now I'm using Vallejo dark rubber here. You could also use any number of, of dark greys, but black I feel is just a little bit too stark and I don't tend to use that. Patience however is the one thing you are going to have to use here if you want a nice, tight, neat looking finish. Once the tyres are done, we're ready to do a tidy up. And I'm going to start on the larger areas such as the return rollers, the idler, the dry sprocket and potentially also the, the flat of the, the lower hull. Just using the original colour that I airbrushed on, in this case it was Dam uh, Tamiya Dark Yellow 2. Don't use your best quality brush for this again folks, just use a brush that's it's suitable and um, isn't going to suffer too much from anywhere and it doesn't take a great deal of time. The next stage however probably will take a bit more. Don't forget to pay attention to those areas not contained within the tracks but they're still going to be visible around the tracks such as here above the track line. That's going to be visible when you reattach the tracks to the hull. There may be areas on the inside of the tracks too, you're not seeing them here, but if, if you flip that over, there may be some areas that will be visible, so just make sure you're painting the whole thing. It can be a bit tricky when you have got the tracks separate to cover everything, so double check it by putting it in place before you start painting to get the full picture. Now for the tricky bit, that if you get it wrong, it's just going to result in more corrections by having to repaint the rubber tires. We're going to try and catch all of the, the raised rim edges on the wheels. You don't have to do it, but if you're going to do it, you're going to get a neater look and this is how I would go about it. So I tend to try to, I tend to point the brush towards the centre of the wheel and use the edge as much as possible to go along the, the rim and then I'll move the track so that I've got the correct angle to do the same all the way around it. So I'm kind of progressing my way around the track, rotating it as I go and correcting all the dark rubber that's gone onto the rim, all of that grey colour as I go. So now we are ready for a wash and I'm using an enamel wash here, one I've used forever on my um, my tracks and lower hulls. It's great for that. I don't typically use it for anything else except for weathering streaks but basically it's MIG enamel wash. Lots and lots of brown washes are out there but I find this is a good thick gloopy wash that's good to create an earthy, dusty, dirty look. So I'm just slapping it on folks 
I'm not putting on too much because then it's going to make the cleanup unnecessarily time consuming and difficult but you can see I'm just getting a coverage all over the the hull, the return rollers, the sprocket, idler, wheels and tyres but not the tracks, I don't bother with the tracks they've got an earthy surface to them you could put this wash on the tracks as well but you might lose a little bit of definition and we still want to keep the definition in what we are doing here to help the eye see what's there because these things are so small now don't forget you also need to once again pay attention to those areas front and back on these separate tracks that are not within the confines of the tracks and the wheels so on the top on the back side as well and I'm going to apply the wash on the underside of the fenders and on any areas that are going to be exposed when the tracks are stuck back in place do this now and it'll be a lot easier than doing it once the tracks have been glued back in so you can see it's, it's overall quite a easy slap it on messy kind of job just be careful you don't use too much now I should say I'm using an old messed up brush for this folks and once I finish the batch I then take some enamel thinner and then I start to work all the wash that I've got on there I use a paper towel to remove any excess wash that I've drawn off and then set the final look you can get those wheels those hull sides as messy and dirty as you want or as well defined dirt as you want as this is an enamel paint as well folks I then leave it until the following day before I do any work to make sure it's completely dry you can add some pigments as you can see here on this tiger tank but I add it to the tracks rather than to the wheels if you do that and take a different approach to both then on the little kits it really stands out you can really see the difference between those two elements whereas applying the same approach to all the elements just draws them all together into the one lump basically so hopefully you found that useful folks hopefully there's some tips and some hints in there some ideas for you guys to try yourselves if you've got any questions stick them down in the comments below and i'll get back to you that's us folks so thanks again for watching thanks to all the subscribers that are out there and if you'd like to subscribe and see this kind of content being spread out across youtube for all the people who love this type of painting and gaming then please do so and if you hit the bell button that means i'll definitely see you guys on the next one